Ok, pregunta 1, M y N Silva, voy al INSE. Spain, 
people speak Spanish. There's nothing that drives me more crazy than people speaking in the sort of accent in English. Uh, if they're Spanish or if they're German or if they're French or anything like that. And, you know, I think Quentin Tarantino really proved that you could do that in a, in a mainstream film with the glorious bastard. And so, also, it just, what it does is it, it really helps the audience disappear, as, as Justin said, into another world. You realize you're somewhere else, you know, and then it helps that illusion of going back to uh, another timeline, another, another existence, another place. Uh, was it hard? No, really, I mean, it's just repetition. You know, thankfully, as Justin said, we, we had great Spanish actors, I could pester, uh, and they recorded the lines for me. Um, Javier, Ovik, uh, Carlos, they all, they all laid down the lines for me, so I had different variations. And then it was just about me repeating them. Thankfully, I didn't have to say a great deal. Yeah. It's the best language, too. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, antes de continuar, quería aclararles acerca del embargo que les hicieron firmar. Eh, lo que, básicamente lo que dice es que, por ejemplo, si vienen de un periódico, no sé, por decirles, el exceso, vienen del exceso, no pueden venderle la fotografía o la entrevista a otro medio. Eso es lo que no quieren que hagan. En su mismo medio lo pueden sacar varias veces. Lo que no pueden es vendérselo o dárselo a otro medio que no sea el que escribieron en el papel ¿ok? Es, de eso se trata para que todos por favor respeten el embargo ¿vale? igual, o sea las agencias tienen que poner agencia y a qué medio se lo van a dar ¿ok? bueno, siguiente pregunta y si tienen dudas, le pueden escribir a la persona, cada quien se llevó un embargo en español, ahí viene el mail de la publicista de Michael Fassender si ustedes tienen dudas, le pueden escribir a él ¿ok? Pero básicamente de eso se trata. Siguiente pregunta, Aida Santana, cinelinia.net. ¿No está? Ok. Julieta Navarrete, Cashman Magazines. Hi, uh, Michael. It's for Michael. So you've been in all different types of movies so far. How do you measure your standards when it comes to choosing scripts? And what was so appealing about Assassin's Creed that made you want to create that? Uh, I guess I like provocative stories. Um, stories that make you think after words when you leave the movie theater, even if it's something like a fantasy ride and something entertainment, just something that percolates in your mind after you've left the cinema. Um, I try and pick sort of original things, things that I um, maybe haven't done before. Uh, and obviously with, with this, we didn't have a script, so when I met the guys from Ubisoft, I didn't really know anything about Assassin's Creed. I'd seen some posters and uh, some adverts on, on television, but I didn't know anything about it. They just start to describe this universe to me. The, uh, the world of Templars, this these secret society, powerful, wealthy society, people that might run the world. Uh, and they believe in science and order, and they also believe that some people should be enslaved. In fact, some human beings are more valuable than others. I thought, okay, that's an interesting group of people. Uh, and then on the flip side of that, you've got the assassins. Uh, and their ideology is that free will should be protected and maintained at all costs for all people. So I thought, okay, you've got a good conflict between these two sort of schools of thought, both of these ideologies fighting for the future of humanity. At the center of that, uh, this concept of genetic memory really grabbed my attention and made me sit up immediately. Uh, the idea that within our DNA we have the experience and knowledge of our ancestors passed down through the generations as sort of survival aid. Uh, that seemed like a really cool thing, but also very plausible scientifically. So I thought, okay, cool. You have a fantasy world that's kind of anchored in something real like this that, that um, elevates it immediately. And then the animus, this you know, genetic time machine, this sort of genetic DeLorean that we could explore uh, different timelines in history with, and also take the elements of the parkour from the game, which I knew would be great in terms of the action sequences. Uh, so it was those things really, and also to be able to play with history, you know, history is usually written by the victors, So if you can play with elements, and it already starting with the, the birth of the first assassins, Adam and Eve were the first assassins, and they decided to pluck the apple from the tree in the Garden of Eden. I thought, that's cool, everybody knows about Adam and Eve, but they didn't know that they were assassins. 
So I just thought there was a really great universe there that would lend itself very, very well to, to the sermon. Siguiente pregunta, Mariana Mier, de Lupa Cacha. Más fuerte no se te escucha. Hola, Michael. Hola, Jocelyn. Después, bueno, esta pregunta va para Michael. Después de una larga trayectoria actoral donde has experimentado con diferentes géneros, estilos y directores, ¿has considerado dirigir alguna película? Y de ser así, ¿qué tema te atrae? Gracias. Yeah, I would like to do it at some point for sure. Uh, I guess I've got to start with something small and you know, start to learn about the camera, work with the camera and the relationship with that to start. I mean, there's so many other things, watching the director at work and, you know, somebody like Justin sort of immersed in all the different departments. I mean, for the last two years he hasn't had a life outside of Assassin's Creed, so it's a very immersive um, commitment. Uh, and it's, it's just, you know, astounds me to see how, how it just takes up your whole life. And, uh, but it's always been something that's interested me. So I will start small and then see where we go. I'm gonna, you know, <clears throat> for the next uh, six months now or so, I'll be working with DMC, my production company. We'll be working with writers and, uh, and directors and developing things, and maybe I'll find something within the slate there that I could do. Brandon Vargas. Mi pregunta, first, welcome to Mexico, Michael. Second, uh, my question is, why do you choose the Spanish Inquisition in, and not the one's histories about the uh, video games? That's a good question. Uh, we, uh, you know, getting together with Ubisoft, we decided that we, were, we wanted to do something original from the games. In a way, to sort of set our own template. Uh, So we developed brand new characters, and along with that, we developed a, a, a new timeline regression. Um, because people have got such um, a relationship with the game and to the characters in the game, we thought we'd bring something fresh to them. Uh, and who knows? In, in, in later uh, movies, we might, you know, call on these characters that are so beloved by the gamers. The Spanish Inquisition just seemed to come really organically, very quickly. It was one of the first things that we um, settled down on in terms of writing the script. Um, you know, it was a pretty nasty time in history, and we just thought, you know, the, it would lend itself pretty well to, to Templars and Assassins, this concept that uh, you have something that seems to be a religious cleansing on the surface, but the idea that behind the curtain there was other politics at play, which, between assassins and, uh, and tempers. Ninoska Aguilar, de Prensa Escenario. You have a site, a comedian site. I never see you in a comedian movie. Do you consider to do someday a comedian movie? Comedy, comedy, yes. Have you considered to do a comedian movie in the future because you have a side very tall and it's not enough time? Yeah, it's about time, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I, I, I'd like to do a comedy, for sure. Hopefully, yes, uh, someday. Hopefully, next time I do something, I'm going to take a, a, you know, a, a, a little break, as I said, for six months or so in terms of acting, but for sure. It's time to do some comedy. <laughs> Gracias, mi Oscar. Liliana Carmona de Televisa.com. Hi, everybody. Um, how much of Assassin's Creed did you know before you decide to become part of this film? And how did you prepare for this movie? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I didn't know anything. Apart from apart from the imagery you know, that you see on the posters and, and obviously in front of the games, you know, which is really striking, um, and the trailers are really cinematic. 
that Ubisoft do for their games, um, which are actually quite intimidating when you think about how you're going to make a film that kind of, um, uh, you know, that, that, that can kind of live up to what's already been done by Ubisoft. But um, no, I had a boot camp uh, with Ubisoft in, in Paris and I had two days playing with Best Gamer. Um, and uh, I was absolutely terrible. Um, it, it's a game that needs a lot of work and practice and uh, uh, dedication and discipline to uh, get any good at it. Um, but uh, it, um, yeah, it was, and, and then we went to Montreal. We, we, we had a look at all the research that had gone into these games, and, and, and it's massive. It's like it's, it's, it's as big as a film. Um, the sort of uh, detail that they put into the film, uh, into the games, not only visually. Uh, in recreating the architecture and so forth, but also the, the, the research behind the history of, of each of the games and the sort of politics and religion and so forth. So, um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was not aware at first, but, but um, the world opened up pretty quickly for me. Paulina Reyes, Quimera Inc. Radio. Hola. Hola. Este... Sabemos que no es la primera vez que trabajan juntos y quiero saber si esto fue les ayudó a, a realizar esta filmación. Uh, <laughs> For sure, you know, we, we developed a, a relationship on Macbeth. It was a very intense experience for all of us, uh, Marianne, Justin, myself. Um, and, and it was just very apparent very early on that Justin was somebody that had a very strong vision. I was already blown away by it before the snow town murders and we went to see it. Uh, the performances, uh, as I say, his vision, how he captured violence as well. And we just got to develop a real um, close trust between one another. We really relied on one another and we developed a shorthand uh, in terms of how we worked. Uh, <clears throat> also, Justin's visual style, along with that of Marco Paul, I just thought was exquisite. And what he did on Macbeth with the resources given to him. Um, I was so impressed by it. So, at some point while we were filming, where I approached Justin and, and said, you know, I'm really interested in, in coming on board with this and this world. And thankfully he did. And then Marion followed shortly after. I mean, you know, Marion's somebody that's on the top of everyone's list as a, as a director. So again, it's, just, it's the, you know, the full credit of Justin that she came on board uh, immediately because of the relationship that they developed you know, working together as well, maybe also with me. Um, so that was, it went from there, and then Justin hooked up with the guys from Ubisoft and New Regency, and they were born. Siguiente pregunta, Lilia Ogita, de Cielo Noticias. Hola, Lilia. Hola, buenos días. ¿Alguna anécdota divertida que nos pueda compartir? Yeah, we went paintballing, didn't we? Do you want to tell us some of that? We did go paintballing, and he, I don't know if you, in, in the film there were the most awful haircuts for Templars um, in, in, the, in the film, and I made a terrible bet uh, with a bunch of stuntmen. A drinking game. A drinking game, where I, uh, I didn't even know what I was betting, and I lost. And one of the things I had to do was get a Templar haircut. If you've seen the film, it, it's, it's, you can't hide behind this haircut, you've got to kind of wear it with confidence. So uh, I thought over the whole period of time that everyone would forget and on the very last day of filming, Mr. Fassbender arrived with some clippers and in front of the whole crew uh, humiliated me uh, brilliantly by, uh, by giving me a temple haircut and shaving my hair. But we did also have, actually Al Maria was amazing, it was suddenly the film just opened up for us over there, um, uh, being, in, being in Spain. But we had this amazing time, Michael uh, hired out a sort of Sergio Leone Western sort of set uh, where we had the whole town um, and uh, yes, had this incredible paintball game for the, for, the, for the whole crew which was quite extraordinary, mixed with a, a little alcohol uh, which I really do not advise uh, using alcohol and paintball at the same time but it was, um, it was great, so I mean, you know, there were, there were many fantastic moments, but that one personally, getting a haircut from you, was <laughs> the one that I remember the most. That's right, and, you, and we were going to the Macbeth screening, like, you know, a week after or whatever, so there is 
pictures out there of this haircut. Uh, and also, you injured yourself during the paintballing shootout. So he was sitting in the porch of the saloon, which was HQ, just sort of with the paintball gun in his leg. <laughs> And I think a, a vodka tonic on the side. A vodka tonic, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I done my hammy uh, pretty quickly in paintball. It's kind of strong, by the way. Okay. Erika Groth, the second international. Yeah, Erika Groth, the international. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Do you like to play characters with uh, conflicts inside? So in, in this case, what was the biggest challenge for you? Uh, well, the, the things, I mean, look, I think we always thought it was an origin story at, at the beginning. It was someone who uh, does not know their true identity and doesn't understand because of, a, because of an incident, a tragedy that's kind of happened in his childhood. Um, so, so, you know, he learns who he is. Uh, in a really unexpected way through this amnesty, this machine that takes you back uh, to the, uh, the memories of your ancestors. And what he discovers is, he's, is that he's extraordinary and that, and that in his blood, just waiting to be kind of woken up by these incredible skills of, of being an assassin, parkour and martial arts and so forth. So there, there's, there's a kind of wonderful kind of origin story in, in, in the film. And then on top of that, you've kind of got this great war between two ideologies of Templars and Assassins. You know, temp um, Assassins are fighting for free will, and, and, and it was, you know, as soon as I sort of read about the game, I thought, well, what a fantastic thing to fight for, instead of just kind of good, bad, light, dark. It, it was morally ambiguous, and it was very interesting in regards to kind of, you know, freedom of choice, freedom of thought, you know, being able to kind of find self-realisation as opposed to being dictated and kind of led by others. And then on the other side, you had Templars who were, um, you know, believed humanity was corrupt. They believed that an elite society, you know, had to kind of um, uh, shadow humanity and, and, and evolve them through science. Um, and I just thought that those, those ideologies are really interesting and have kind of patterns through real history. Um, and I think that's why it's, they so beautifully, the, the war between Templars and Assassins within the game, so beautifully sit between real history. Um, so there was a lot of meat in the bone already, which was really surprising. I mean, I, I, I think most people's assumptions of, of, of video games are it, it's all about the gameplay. And I was just blown away by um, the, the level of work and, and integrity and complexity that had gone into this game. You know, it was perfect material for a film. Uh, yes, I think going back to this lady's question earlier about doing comedy, uh, yeah, probably should do some of that now. Uh, conflicted characters, I guess uh, there's there's something to play there with. Uh, again, it's sort of, it, it goes back to what I said earlier about sort of provoking an audience and sort of maybe through the journey of these characters uh, we can all sort of maybe reflect on ourselves and the world around us, uh, but it's time for me to do something different. Uh, in terms of challenge, um, producing was uh, definitely the challenge on this for me. I mean, getting together with the guys from Ubisoft uh, from the beginning, uh, finding writers, you know, starting to develop the script from scratch, um, and then finding, you know, the director, which we did, and Justin was fantastic fine. Um, uh, and then, you know, the casting thing. Yeah, that was just, a, it was a baptism of fire for me. I've done it on a smaller level with the film again, a production company called Slow West, but that was $2 million. This was a, you know, a much bigger thing. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I learned a lot. It was very it was challenging, but rewarding. Sandra Gutierrez, Entertainment as a Hey, Sandra. Nos has comentado de que eh, empezaste a ver los videojuegos, que empezaste mucho 
a, a los creadores, pero ¿cómo fue crear eh, el personaje? Por lo mismo de que es un personaje como muy, muy difícil de todo lo que nos ha venido presentando. Um, well, the, the, um, it was interesting, the characters really evolved quite dramatically through the, through the development of the film. Um, actually, one character changed sex, um, you know, at which Marion uh, ended up uh, playing Sophia, who seems to actually be a kind of male character in the film. So that was really interesting, actually, how, how they kind of turned and flowed. And actually, when, when Sophia was created, it, it really changed the dynamic of the, of, of the story and, and actually started to make it kind of really click. Um, actors, <clears throat> I mean, there are, you know, there, there are so many people that want to work with Michael, so he's a massive draw card with other actors. Um, and then, you know, it was just good material, I think. I think for a genre film like this, and for it to have the sort of depth there, and to have some of those uh, really quite complex scenes in the film, um, we were very, very lucky that we could attract such an amazing cast. And when some Marion came on, it just started to kind of amazingly grow. <laughs> You know, we've got Brendan Gleeson and Michael K. Williams and um, and uh, Jeremy Irons and Dan, Dan Menashe, this beautiful French actress Ariane Lebed, who plays Maria in the film. Um, it, it became a kind of really interesting um, mixture of of you know different faces that that uh, and, and different nationalities and cultures that uh, and then all the Spanish actors as well, um, Javier and Hovic and uh, Carlos. So uh, it was very exciting directing this film performance-wise because it's very rare that you get such a kind of ensemble of, of great actors you know, involved in a, in a, in a film you know, of this scale. Um, and, um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I guess um, there was two characters to, to approach. Um, Aguilar was somebody, Justin and I sort of were discussing kind of like a Western-type character. He doesn't say a lot, um, which again helped with my Spanish, but uh, he was a kind of man that expressed himself through his actions. Uh, he was he's somebody that very much believed uh, in his cause, so he's dedicated to it. He belongs to something, he's willing to sacrifice himself for this, this belief system. Uh, but really, that was, it was a physical part. We knew that we were, a lot of our action sequences were going to be in the regression, so they were the parkour elements. Uh, and as well as the fight choreography to work on. So there was a lot of physical training for both characters. Um, just sort of physical conditioning and then working with the stunt people as much as I could, as much time as allowed myself and Ariane and Hovick. You know, again, Justin's vision was to do this uh, old school, like in terms of the action sequences, we're going to be in real locations with real people fighting. Uh, so we were running around the tops of buildings in Valletta and Malta, hanging off and jumping from them. And so we wanted to do as much as we could. In fact, the actors did do 95% of the fighting themselves. So that was one element. Uh, Cal then is somebody who's the opposite of Aguilar. He's selfish. He's become quite cynical, distrusting of people because of what he's gone through. He's had to look after himself um, since he's been eight years of age. Spent a lot of his time going in and out of correctional facilities. When we leave him, he's on death row, about to be executed. So. He's a hardened sort of individual. And it's only really through his experience in the animals that he starts to realize that he does belong to this brotherhood. He has a lineage to it dating back to 1500, uh, sorry, 15th century Spain. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was interesting playing those two off each other, but luckily we, we filmed them kind of in sequences. Aguilar came first, we shot Regression 2 and 3 first. Then I shot the, the Cal stuff in London, and then we finished up uh, in Almeria. With, uh, with the first progression. Manuel Zurita, Monte Broadway. Hi. Uh, hi, how are you? Good morning. Uh, I'm going to make a book. Uh, what did you think uh, if you the action in King Mommy? Um, it is in. Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, 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 <laughs> Eh, 
Y espera, en, en mis últimas acciones en la película, con tu, con tu, con tu aventura y lo que sientes para ti. ¿Qué dijo? <laughs> It's no uh, I feel good. Uh, uh, I guess it was important to do a lot of training for this because uh, you know I found that since I hit my mid 30s, the recovery level uh, it takes a little longer in terms of when you get a knock or an injury. But I enjoy um, the physical aspect of, of doing these sort of action films for sure. It's nice to sort of get paid to sort of get fit, I suppose. Um, it's, you're always up against time pressure, so sometimes you think, oh, I wish I had a little bit more time in that fight sequence. But on the whole, um, they're very, it's a very sort of rewarding experience. It was really hot. <laughs> Walter, I, mean, I think at one point, the measuring stick was that I, I think I drank like 10 liters of water and I never went to the toilet. Which is everything's just sweat, sweat, sweat. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's enjoyable. I like doing both. You know, I like to do something that's you know a small independent film and, um, and doesn't have this sort of action element to it. And then I, I really enjoy uh, performing in these kind of films as well, as I do as a as a sort of as a fan, as somebody who goes to the cinema. I like to watch both too. Bernice Bautista, can you say
sort of show and see how Cal, the present day character, evolves into an assassin. You know, see how he starts to learn to jump and starts to learn to fight. So we created a kind of virtual reality experience with the animals with this kind of crazy arm that allows him to perform and do most of the action within this kind of theatre of, of, <clears throat> of the animals. So that's a whole new venture for, 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 for the gamers um, and definitely something that Ubisoft are very excited about. There's a strange cross-pollination going on at the moment where Ubisoft are very keen to sort of evolve that even further and perhaps use it in the next game, which, which we're really excited about, that you know, the, the, the game world and the film world could actually have a kind of dance there. Ultima pregunta, this is the last question. Mariana Pascual de Ubisoft. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with crazy Assassin's Creed fans every day, so congratulations and good luck. Um, we learned today that Justin, you're terrible at playing video games, that's cool. But was playing the video games a part of the research process for the crew, or do you think it should be? And thinking of next games, which time and which country do you guys think it would be like a great option to create a new Assassin's Creed story? That's a secret. <laughs> I, I stupidly said, I like the Cold War, and now suddenly everyone's saying this. Just to make it up, actually. You should have make something up. I know, I know. So, you know, I have a great interest in the Cold War, but I don't think we'll be doing Assassin's Creed 2 in the Cold War. But, um, a lot of, you know, it was interesting. There were a lot of gamers that were actually on the crew. You know, like the guy who did the weaponry, Tim Wild Goose, was, was a huge fan. Danny Walters, who did the 120 foot jump, was a, was a huge fan. And you, and you have to play the game to understand the moves, you know, to understand the kind of world that, you, that you're in. Um, and uh, that, we, we sat down with the choreographer and we sat down with the fight, uh, some of the, some of the, the guys that were doing fight sequences and, and really went through the game and started to kind of study some of the moves that, that the assassins were, were doing in the gameplay. So, there, there, there definitely was a crossover there. Uh, I had played the game before I met the guys from Ubisoft, but once I came on board I played the game, out of respect to them, first and foremost. But then I, I was curious um, to see what sort of world that they created. They described it so fascinatingly, and both Justin and I had been given the Ubisoft Bible, you know, the Assassin's Creed Bible, with all the characters and the history. Uh, but Outside of that, it was important for me to see how the characters moved, uh, so I could understand the strike poses, the kill poses. Um, so yeah, that that was important for me um, to play the game. Uh, in terms of the other crew members, as, as Justin said, there were a lot of gamers there, a lot of a lot of fans of the games. In terms of pleasing fans and pleasing new people that come into it, you know, you have to deal with it with a certain amount of respect and disrespect. You know, because everybody's got their opinion. And if you try and follow everyone's opinion, you know you make a mess. So we chose key things from the game, which were like, who are Templars? What do they represent? Who are Assassins? What do they represent? Uh, what is an artifact? So we chose the, the, the apple from the Garden of Eden because people that have never played the game have a relationship to that. Uh, the Animus, what is that? And this concept of genetic memory and parkour elements. That's enough. For people that have never played the game before, that's enough. And one of the, the biggest challenges for us uh, was how do we distill this dense universe uh, and bring something um, to simplify it, essentially, for people that could walk into the cinema without any background knowledge and, and enjoy this experience. Um, that, 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 was, that, was, that was a challenge uh, and something that, that we all kind of agreed on the major points that we were going to deal with. Okay, pues muchísimas gracias por haber venido, and we are done.